My name is James Lee Cox. I'm better known as Joe Cox. I'm from Bell Haven, North Carolina. I'm a commercial fisherman. I has been for 37 years and I work with the tapes from over Pamico Beach. They originally uh, worked at from Corpus Christi, Texas all the way up to Nova Scotia. At this time, we is down in a part of High County that they call Swarm Quarter. And this is where some of the bigger boats come into when they is out fishing, shrimping, or whatever. But anyway, working from Corpus Christi, Texas, down to St. Augustine, Florida. We um, shrimp days and night, and we caught anywhere from 30 to 60 to 75 baskets of shrimp, a drag, uh, in the course of about four to five hours drag. We would drag at least one week, one way, and one week back into the port which we uh, first left out of. And this is generally the summer months, round about um, like July, uh, August, into September. And from September, uh, uh, from September to um, August, so August, September, October, we worked it from Florida down to South Carolina, uh, Charleston, South Carolina. And we um, did that up until the winter months come in. And then we worked it from um, South Carolina, North Carolina, and down into uh, North Virginia fishing. And we fished scallop, uh, lobster, and also monktail in those months. And then we would go farther up to Nova Scotia. And we also would be scalloping and flounder fishing up there. We catch mostly jimbo flounder at all times. Now, we um, work about two weeks out of um, two weeks before we would come in, depending on the weather. And then if the weather was going to get bad, we have weather channels to let us know, and we would come in beforehand. It's time that we is caught off in the Atlantic about three to four hundred miles straight offshore in about eight, nine, ten mile deep water, sometime no bottom. But we would get caught out there and by the time we would try to make it back into the dock, we would it would get calm, we had to turn around and go back out. And so but the boat that I was on was like 125, 135 foot. It slept 16 heads, and it had holes that was the average of a bedroom in a house. And the fuel capacity was 40,000 gallon. We had four 10,000 gallon tanks. For our power that we had on our boat, it was V16, 149 A lot of people don't know what that means. That means that the court nozzle is a twin screw. And it would ordinarily take two engines to power those two uh, props, but by having what they call a court nozzle, they joins together 
on the bottom and that one engine turned both props. And for auxiliary engine, for power, the lights, the stove, and whatever else, um, we have a V12 engine. And it have the capacity of about 1,600 horsepower. The power that the V16 149 is about 4,800 horses. About the same power that a crane engine that you see running on the track would have. So you can imagine the power. And we um, also uh, the, we have what they call on the back of the boat, which you can't see from here, um, they call a net wheel. And the net wheel is a great big spool, look like a cotton spool, but it's made out of steel. And it is powered by hydraulic. Hydraulic would turn this big wheel and it would pull the cable on one side, the nets and everything on the other side. And when it get to the back of the boat, the boat's got a V-shape uh, from the bottom up where you hook the line to uh, and pull it aboard the boat to dump it out. Now we catch it sometimes when we fishing, we average about 50 to 150 boxes of fish a grab. We um, don't look really at how much each boat get because each boat have what they call a VHF radio and then they have a citizen band radio. And the guys, uh, if they friend and one boat is catching more than the other one, they call the other boat and let him know, well, we're doing pretty good over here. You might want to take up and come over here and help us out. And so they would do just that, and then they would share like, you know, from the kids. Not, and the guys that do crab potting, they make just as much money of a year sometime as to the bigger boats. They, um, they make on the average of 75 to 150 to 200 thousand dollars for a little four to five month season that the crabs uh, is running. After that, it start to get too cold for them to catch crabs again. They close the season down, and the guys have made their money for the winter. A lot of them pay the boats off. A lot of them have them a home built. Some of them get them a brand new truck. Some take and buy more pots. The guy, uh, Stephen Nixon, that I used to work with in a smaller boat, um, he got like 1,500 crab pots. He fishes anywhere from 500 to 600 a day. And then the next day he uh, let this one rest, and then he'll go to the next one and fish that one. And then he'll go from there and fish the third one. And, you know, it's all in where you go, what you're doing, and what you want to do about the situation of working on the Pamico or working on the Atlantic Ocean. It's really a made-up mind thing. You have to make your mind up about it. And the most important part that I liked about it was the money-making. When you go out there and you're with a good captain, know what he's doing, you can make good and big money. You go with one that don't know much about what he's doing, uh, what it's all about, you, it cost you more fixing up than what you can really pay back, and the captain and yourself, if you don't own the boat, can lose your job. But anyway, the most important part of that is that the money is great if you use it wisely. And if you don't use it wisely, then it can cost you in the long run because my captain used to tell me when the winter come, you know, if you save a little, then it's a rainy day coming and you can look back and look at, you know, what you got. You won't have to come to him to borrow none. 
but if you made it, you got it put away, and that way you need it, you can go and get it and do what you got to do. But.